If we commit ourselves to staying right where we are, then our experience becomes very vivid. Things become very clear when there is nowhere to escape. Pima Chodron, When Things Fall Apart, Hard Advice for Difficult Times One of the unique factors in this very politically polarized time is that a virus does not discriminate due to political beliefs. There is truly nowhere to escape during this public heat crisis, and so we are forced to confront what is right in front of us. Some people are content in the midst of deprivation and danger, while others are miserable despite having all the luck in the world. This is not to say that external circumstances do not matter. But it is your mind, rather than circumstances themselves, that determines the quality of your life. Your mind is the basis of everything you experience and of every contribution you make to the lives of others. Given this fact, it makes sense to train it. Sam Harris, Waking Up, A Guide to Spirituality Without Religion Training includes meditation, something that Sam Harris knows well. Many of us are faced with suddenly being thrown back to the base of Maslow's Pyramid. Those working in the hospitality, entertainment, and numerous other industries have to pay bills. The survival instinct is kicking in. Yet mindset still matters. Even if the familiar is unsatisfactory, we tend to cling to it because we are afraid of the unknown. Karen Armstrong, Buddha. The scariest aspect of the present moment is that no one knows. We can only speculate and hope experts provide the best guidance they can. That said, clinging to what was before will not help. If we can be open, we find that life's unpredictability is full of interesting and invigorating challenges. These challenges engage us in unexpected and unanticipated ways and allow for the freedom of unscripted responsiveness. Right action is more than just a reaction. It springs from an attunement to the moment that the confines of convention obscure. Mark Epstein, Advice Not Given, A Guide to Getting Over Yourself After Buddha developed his Four Noble Truths, he needed a prescriptive plan. This arrived in the form of the Noble Eightfold Path. Here, Epstein addresses one of these limbs, right action. To live on this shifting ground, one first needs to stop obsessing about what has happened before and what might happen later. One needs to be more vitally conscious of what is happening now. This not to deny the reality of past and future. It is about embarking on a new relationship with the impermanence and temporality of life. Instead of hankering after the past and speculating about the future, one sees the present as the fruit of what has been and the germ of what will be. Gautama did not encourage withdrawal to a timeless, mystical now, but an unflinching encounter with the contingent world as it unravels moment to moment. Stephen Batchelor Confessions of a Buddhist Atheist what I've always appreciated about Buddhism is its initial refusal to discuss metaphysical concepts. Here Bachelor sums up why we need to focus on what's in front of us. We cannot attain true peace of mind merely by seeking our own salvation while remaining indifferent to the welfare of others. Philip Keplo, The Three Pillars of Zen Teaching, Practice, and Enlightenment If there is any singular lesson we can all learn right now, it's the reality of another Buddhist principle, interdependence. We're all in this together. The key, taught the Buddha, lies in not taking trauma personally. When it is seen as a natural reflection of the chaotic universe of which we are a part, it loses its edge and can become a deeper object of mindfulness. Mark Epstein, The Trauma of Everyday Life In an individualistic culture such as America, it is easy to take affronts personally. Again, disease does not discriminate. Yes, it is predominantly attacking people with compromised immune systems, but that has nothing to do with the usual markers we use to divide societies, such as race, class, or gender. The normal definitions of self are useless in the face of a pandemic, forcing us to reconsider what self implies. Each instance of craving involved an escape from the here and now, a desire for becoming or being something or someplace other than what the present moment offered. 
but to seek ceaselessly some new state of being while at the same time striving for permanence was to expose oneself to frustration. Pankaj Mishra, an end to suffering, the Buddha in the world. Attachment is one of the main forms of bondage. We are, as stated, in a new world. The sooner we recognize that, the better it will be for our mental health. Our pains are sufferings, obviously. Our ordinary pleasures seem the opposite, but the seeker of enlightenment knows that they bring suffering by being fleeting and addictive, leaving us more discontent when we lose them than if we never had them. Robert Thurman, Inner Revolution, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Real Happiness The tendency to avoid pain at all costs and seek pleasure has always been fawed. Now we are being collectively forced to confront bad fact. The practice of embodied